What do you do when you have $50,000 worth of machine parts that were destined for space just a few days ago and you find out they all have one feature that is out of spec by mere tenths, a few microns? Technically, you know what you have is a heap of scrap. Scrap that can ultimately cause a catastrophic failure. But how scrap are we talking here, right? It's a few tenths. It's $50,000 in parts. You have bills to pay. You have employee paychecks to hand out. $50,000, eight weeks of manufacturing process and one impossible problem. So what do you do? Well, you have to do the right thing. So you call the customer and you talk to them. They tell you, hey, look, we really need these parts. Don't worry about it. It's not a critical feature. Go ahead and ship them to us. And so you do. Well, this is the situation that we found ourselves in years ago. I can personally remember having to call Titan in, grabbing the machinist, and having to have these meetings over these questionable parts. And every single time, it was Titan who had to make those tough calls. Until one day, enough was enough, and it all stopped. Now, owners of machine shops have a lot on their plate, and the last thing they want to do is call up a customer and ask if they will take a part that is mostly good. I mean, think about it, right? When in your life do you want to accept something that is mostly good? I mean, if the fire department was at your house because your house had caught on fire, and on the way out they're like, hey, have a nice day, you know, the fire is mostly extinguished, would you feel that you had been well served? Probably not, right? If you go into your bank and you ask to pull out all your savings and like, ah, oh, well, we got most your money. Would you feel that they had been a good steward of your resources? Again, probably not. The truth is that nobody really wants to accept a mostly good anything good or service or whatnot. And to have to put your customer in that position is a sure way to make for a very uncomfortable relationship. This is what made the problem so difficult for Titan every time he had to make that call. And it's not that we even lacked the philosophy. In fact, we had signs posted all over the shop, even in the bathrooms. We had our company philosophy posted. In fact, number two was a obsession for perfection. It was literally one of our core principles. This is who we are supposed to be. This is what we are supposed to be about. And yet, slowly but surely, exceptions to this became not only acceptable, but began to be expected. Hey, Travis, what are you doing, dude? I'm just filming a video, Donnie. Oh, really? Have you told them to subscribe to our channel yet? I haven't. Have you told them to hit like and ring that notifications bell? Nope. Have you told them to go to our store at titansofcnctooling.com right now and buy stuff so it can support free education? No, but you just did. Oh, well cool man. Sorry to interrupt your video, dude. I actually came in here for a thread gauge. <laughs> so what do we do? We came full stop immediately. Everybody got called in the office and a new rule was to be the norm from here on out. One tenth of a thou out of tolerance, point zero 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 one, and the part gets red tagged, scrapped, done. No more calls to customers, no more letting close enough be acceptable. If it was out, it was out and we would have to either remake the part or we'd have to rework it. And that was it. We had a standard and that is what we're going to be known for. No exceptions. This is the way it was. The funny thing is, this policy, it wasn't always the most popular, right? We did get some grumbling here and there. People would fuss and fight, and you know, whether it really mattered, maybe we should just call the customer again. But the more that we adhered to it, the more that it was the absolute standard by which we had to work, the more it spread throughout the company. Not only did the parts start coming out right, the parts started getting set up right, right? Things were being put away, inspection forms were being filled out. And I tell you what, I swear, even the shop began to look nicer with everybody taking a little more pride in what they were doing. The thing is that really we didn't have a tolerance problem, right? We had an attitude problem and starting with one, it fixed the other. Now, don't get me wrong. It takes more than just, you know, demanding things from your employees to get the change you want. Luckily though, Titan cared enough not to just simply call out the problem, but he was also willing to come out and be a part of the solution. If we had problems that needed to be fixed, he was there to offer advice and expertise. If people were getting discouraged, which from time to time they were, he would come out and inspire and motivate. His involvement turned a company problem into a company solution, and this, this made 
made all the difference. When you're making parts that put people in space, parts that keep people's bodies functioning for years to come, parts that are instrumental in bringing us the modern world as we know it, tolerance and quality cannot be compromised. Good enough is not the mantra that made America the hallmark of the industrial world. And unless you want to watch your company die a slow death, it definitely shouldn't be yours.